Hey guys, Kent and Greg tonight, and actually I found three courses, well I didn't find them, they were handed to me, um, I was over on Reddit, and a couple of the guys were like, hey man, and they weren't asking me, they just said, hey you know, new designer, this is the first one I feel I can actually publish, and you know feel okay about it but i really want some feedback on what you on you know what you think about the course and i said well i said you know we're uh you know greg and i um checked out courses for years you know with new designers and uh, i said we can put it on our show i said even if you can't do it live you know at least you can watch it later and you know we'll try to provide as much good feedback as we can. We're not just going to tear you a new asshole um, and say the course sucks and go away. Um, we have had courses like that, but there are far and few in between. So um, tonight we're going to do three of them. Um, and I... That's what she said. <laughs> there's only two holes, though. It's, all right, so <laughs> I want to see that. Well, no, I actually, there are three holes. Uh, so... First one's going to be Palm Beach GC Beta. Um, this guy hit me up on uh, on the on the website, so I said, "Well, yeah, I'll give it a shot." And Greg happened to be available, so we'll definitely check this out. Um, we're going to play the normal defaults, green speeds, medium. I see here, fairways normal, greens normal. And we're going to play from the back tees and pin three. And as soon as Greg clicks ready, we'll be good to go. Sorry. Yeah. There we no go. problem. Damn Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you need two screens, dude. I know. I need to All get right. the second screen. All right. So let's check out Palm Beach GC Beta. Let's. And like I said with Greg, I said, well, you know, we'll play nine holes of each or, or few, you know, it all depends on the course, you know, so if it's really, really bad. I don't know if we're going to get to nine holes. Hey, Rich, what's going on, buddy? So, like I said, Ooh. you know, so this is the guy's first Ooh. course. Okay, he even did some retaining walls there. Bunkers look decent. Water. Water looks good. Got some bridges going on. They actually look level. The bunkers look somewhat contoured deep. All right. The green's really tiny. First first course? Yep. Really? Okay. Yeah. First published course. So now I I'm saying that. I I don't know for certain because I didn't check him out on the I just want to see if I go in the water here oh yep. did you see that oh I see that yeah, <laughs> got some uh, transition uh, problems there look at the uh, yeah chasm that goes down into the water there mm. yep. that needs to be fixed okay and as far as this tee off I mean it's 44 feet down you know because with designing, yeah, Rich. I mean, but you could see the he was trying to do the retaining walls, <clears throat> and there's a little gap. And there's a the gap. Water. He sucked down the ground too deeply. Yep. So, um, so there's a gap. Yeah, that needs to be fixed. But that's a common mistake made by. Yep. Yeah, retaining walls young, are not easy to do correctly. Yeah. He obviously tried to build up the uh, land, uh, the, the you know the the surfacing around it, and, and missed some. <laughs> mm -hmm. Didn't build it up enough, and you can see it right there. Yeah, right, right there. there. So, yeah. Not that's... only does it look bad, but it, it obviously penalizes the golfer when he finds that there's this mysterious chasm. Hey, thanks, Spot. Fuck yourself. Uh, oh no, that was another one I signed up too. Oh, okay. So, yeah, we're on D Live now. Oh, okay. 
I thought it was a bot. So see that gap there, guys, if you can see that? Um, that ground just needs to be raised back up. And that, it's tough to do. So it's not easy. Yeah, retaining walls are a bitch. Yep. I really hope in the next TGC they make them a little more, you know, user friendly. But in the meantime, it takes some takes some practice, Indeed. especially if you make them to make them look really nice and clean. And the the hard part is getting the surrounding terrain around them to look natural. Um, which I still struggle. Let me see. Ooh, didn't make it. Well, it's alright. I'll just chip it right in. This pin position um, is actually a little close to the edge here. Yeah, he's got some. Uh... Oh, 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 you bastard! And if you look around, yeah, he's got some. Uh... Yes, curved walls, Rich. Curved walls. Oh, you... curved retaining walls. So you don't have to do the little dinky ones. See, like that little here. area right there, that just needs to be cleaned up. Mm -hmm. You know how he has the fairway and the rough. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, there's some transition issues. Yeah. <clears throat> Not glaring, but a little tweaking here. And yeah, there. they're just little things. Yep. All right, what do we got? 144, my favorite speed. All right. And this is the beta version of this, so I'm assuming that he can take our suggestions yep, and tell exactly. us to go fuck ourselves. I mean, and then put them to use by making some changes. Yeah, that pin needs to be pulled back a little bit, generally. Yeah, yeah. At least it, three squares from the edge. <clears throat> That's uh, one square, one and a little bit more. That would be considered kind of a uh, an illegal pin, actually, if it was uh, reviewed by a TDC reviewer. Green's a little small, I think. Yeah, it is. And I noticed that as soon as we uh, brought up the hole. <clears throat> so. so transitions and a little larger green and maybe pull your pin back. Ooh, All right. Narrow. So this one. You got a narrow fairway. But, you know. All right. Now, I'm noticing how thick that secondary rough is there. But I was let, noticing that too. It's not con the same as it was. Let, on the yeah, I was just going to say, let's see if it's consistent throughout the course. And because if you look at your bunker on your green there, um, that secondary rough is kind of going in and out with the, the heavy rough around the bunker. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure it's uniform around your bunker, whatever, whatever uh, surface you're using. Um, it looks really, it doesn't look clean when it's all uneven like that. So if right. you're going to do secondary rough around your bunker, then do secondary going to do heavy rough, do heavy rough. Don't do both. Now, if you noticed, when I started this, it gave me a six iron. Oh, so what yeah, that waypoint. what that normally means is your waypoint is not adjusted properly. So when you go into the designer, you want to move the waypoint on hole number two here and move it out to 280 yards. You know, and that'll yep. stop people from getting bogus clubs. Yeah, we'll um, get driver every time. Right, like I did there, right? Assuming that's what you want them to have. Right. Now, I know how much as, oh, Greg okay. loves tournament objects. Do you want to say anything about them? or These are some great fucking tournament objects. Yeah, that's what I want to say. You know, and it's no. true. I mean, unless, you're, no. unless your course is going on the tour, you know, on one of the tournaments and something like that, we frown upon tournament objects. They're just there. You know, it's. Yeah, I'm, I've never been a fan of them. I think right. they detract I, from the natural beauty of a course. But, I, I mean, I guess that's kind of a personal preference. Right. I don't and, like them, but. Right. So, just a thought to put into your head. It's not. It's not affecting anything. Well, at least no. yours isn't. I've seen tournament objects placed <sighs> in areas, and you're like, "How the hell are you going to take a shot with that thing there?" So, um, yeah, just something to keep in mind. And and again, I'd have to. We have to play some more holes. But it looks to me, and maybe I'm premature, but like his secondary rough, <clears throat> your light rough around. I'm zooming out here. Nobody can see me doing this, but it's really wide on this particular fairway. Um, it should be a set width 
for the entire course so that it doesn't right you want like to keep it uniform one, yeah one yep. one fairway you got and you got an inch of you know light rough and then another fairway you got 17 feet of it so try to make sure that it's you know, consistent throughout the whole course yep yeah just keep it all the same width and that's a setting that you can is it going to get there not bad um that's a setting that you can set in the in the course designer um that's a but you might want to zoom in on that that left hand green bunker. The uh, again, he's got the two bigger one. Yeah, the one that it slopes up. He's got two different surfaces, kind of intermingling around that. You want to again, you know, choose choose a surface to to put the bunker in, and don't don't have two different surfaces weaving in and out of it. It just looks really funky. You got light rough and you got heavy rough kind of right. all over that bunker. Yeah. So because you can see it mainly it. on the edge there. If you see the dark green and the light green. Mm -hmm. And then over here it's you know the light green only and then it goes back to the dark green, that type of thing. You can clean yeah. up pretty easily. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just use your brush. Yep. To paint light rough around the curved part of those bunkers. As far as the the uh, contouring of his bunkers, they don't look too bad. No, they don't. They got some nice depth to them. Look pretty clean, actually. I like them. I'm not used to playing uh, soft greens. You know, where it just like sticks in the mud. Yeah, 144 speed. Yeah, that's something we're not used to, right? Nope. Also, the far edge of your green there had a whole ton of red uh, on it. I don't know if that was intentional or not. You wanted maybe a, maybe he wanted like a, a backstop. Okay. Back. Wow, this is a narrow channel. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. Good sight lines. You can see your yep. landing area. Yep. And that's, that's key for me. I think Greg as well likes it. Um, we're, if you're looking out from the tee box, you want to be able to see the area that you're driving to. So this is perfect. Mm -hmm. You have nothing really blocking it except um, we can't see that left side bunker. So what you could do, just a quick fix, is the area from the back here, lower it on the left side. These humps, move it down a little bit. That side of the fairway there, lower that. And, you know, I've got some tutorials on how to raise up the bunkers as well on the on the YouTube channel, too. So, but this is much better than the last hole. The other mm -hmm. one was blind. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with the occasional blind yeah. tee shot or approach shot, but, but you want to keep them kind of, you know, minimal. Oh, if you have a bunker placed in the center of the fairway, would you prefer the strip of light rough around it or circle splines around bunker? Which is yeah, I do. It? I do the circle splines yeah. to get the like the yeah. the medium That's rough like. around it. That's it's, what I like. Although it's kind of a personal preference thing, I think yeah. it looks cleaner that way. But mm -hmm. um, it's tricky when you put a bunker in the middle of a fairway. And of course, he's got that bunker on the right and the left sticking out into the fairway, which. I don't know. I, I, I usually try not to do that, but if you're going to do it, then yeah, I think that's probably the best. Yeah, way. I mean, I always spline that. Yeah. The heavier rough. Yeah. Yeah, not just the the fairway edge, if you will. Mm -hmm. But again, nice uh, contouring on your bunkers. Yeah. They got some nice. Uh, they got some nice. Except for that in. one spot right over there, I'm looking right where you're at. Oh, I see. It yeah. just needs it flattened. Yeah. But that's always something that annoys me when people have like really flat or really yep. chunky looking. Like they tried to add some depth, but they didn't do it evenly and it's all kind of chunky yep. looking. That kind of irritates me. But this looks good. I mean, I like the layout of his course. You know, I mean, it's like, let's see. <clears throat> now, I mean, I did notice that he likes, it almost looks auto-gen, you know, with this type of stuff. Could oh, be wrong. The, uh, edge of the water there? Yeah, and I mean, 
to have the fairway right near it. I could be right, wrong. Yeah, I see what you're saying. You, you know what I mean? You can like, cut that a little shorter from the water. and edge. Right, bring it up right further. Edge. Yeah. So maybe have 10 yards of rough and then yeah. bring the tee boxes up so you can actually reach it. Because oh, if we had pro clubs, I barely made that. I was just going to say, because Greg plays the pro clubs, I play the master. If we had a 15 mile an hour wind here, Greg would have been, there's no way he could hit it. Right. I would have used it. I would have been pitching it to the end of this fairway. Yeah. So make sure you, you consider all the different clubs. Well, fuck the beginner clubs, but at least consider the pro clubs as well as the master clubs. Right. On your distances. Um, and, and like, if they have a high wind in their face, are they going to be able to reach, you know? Yeah. Like the bunker there on the right looks good. Yep. It looks smooth. It looks clean. It was the one back there just was a fluke, I guess. Oh, I, Ooh, I did not get all that. My white line stopped in the middle. That's weird. Huh? I thought I got a full stroke. I guess I did not. That's what she said. 669 yard par five. This is not uh, a short hole. No. And I keep forgetting we're playing soft green so that it lands and stays there. No roll up. As far as your, your green sculpting goes, so far I don't really have any complaints. Yeah, I mean, this is a false front, which is fine. Yep. You, you seem to have, I don't see any, uh, you know, uh, yellow slopes within nine uh, squares of the of, of the pin so far, and you seem to have put some thought into your pin placements and your contouring of the, the greens. So, oh, oh, nice that was almost there. So now that, now the greens look good. Yep. I mean, even at one forty fours, he's got some movement going on. So, oh uh, yeah, I wonder what they'd be like at one. Yeah, and again, I'm not gonna. <laughs> beat yeah. up on him and put 187s on and go, oh, that's illegal. Because he yeah. probably didn't, uh, you know, he didn't test it. Okay, we got an uphill, par th long par three. With a real tiny Ooh. green. Yeah, that's no good. Yeah, so he's got yeah, the rough. The distance on this, yeah, it's going to be hard to come anywhere near that pin and hold it. Mm -hmm. and, and also your transitions around that front bunker there. You got the brown strip there. Uh, on the front left of that bunker, so there's there's some servicing issues there. So you see that dirt line right there? Oh no, that, shit, Rich. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go go ahead. I'm, I'm gonna. Uh, so we got see that dirt line there, Greg. What causes that? I forget. What causes the, the uh, that dart? I mean, his is a consistent all the way around the hole. Yeah. That that's laying down textures. Um, I'm trying to is remember. it because uh, his light rough is not long was... enough? I can't remember. Right, I haven't done it in so long. I forget what causes that. When, when you when it, when you lay down a texture, you know, in other words, you want to surround that green with say light rough. You know how I showed you? Okay, you got a shape for a green for one part of your green, and you lay it down. Then you immediately, without moving your mouse, switch no to a different No second shape. surface. That's what, that's what Yeah, Rich there you is. go. Okay, so he's, in other words, he's not putting a second surface there. So the rough is like coming right up against the, the green surface and it leaves that ugly kind of gap thing. To do that, make sure you lay down a second surface using the same shape as you did before. If you're splining, spline around it with the, with the light rough. Because you just basically ran the heavy rough right up against your green, and it creates that kind of gap, which creates that dirt line that looks like All shit. Right. Yeah, so the, this hole, take it or leave it, I would leave it. I mean, I, I don't like this hole because it's uphill, which means you have no, no height. And for the length of this hole, oh, shit. there's no way you could stay on that green. No way. Yeah, you, you especially need to, with that pin, and you have rough in front of the pin over there. Yeah, and the bunker. So, like right there. Okay. So, you know, it's. To, I to, would almost to, reverse the hole so you're hitting down, you know, that type of thing. Um, Rich uh, points let's out see, that 19 yards. Mr. Bellamy, Mr. Bellamy on his YouTube channel is reviewing all of those. Oh yeah, yeah. 
That'll take about a year and a half. <laughs> yeah, 18 of them. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, it is I saw cool. Last night, I, I he did one of one of yours, and then I was not aware that he was going through your whole library. That's yeah, I cool. didn't know that either. Yeah, cool. cool. Oh, go in the hall. Nope. So yeah, th this whole this hole could use some work. Yeah. So this hole is not a keeper. So yeah, enlarge the green, move that front bunker back. Change, make sure that you spline. If you're, I'm assuming you're using splines, if not shapes, add the second uh, light rough around the green to get yep. rid of that ugly trench, and make sure that you understand that you know leave your leave your golfer some some room to roll up to that hole because we're not going to be able to do it uphill yeah. with this distance against the wind. Yeah, I mean I don't know if you play real golf at all, but you know it's you know if you're hitting uphill with a with a in our case, a wood just to get up to the hole, you have no spin to stop the ball, right? So it would have to be a big green and let it roll up that type and of here, thing. And, and here, that same surface initial around your tee box is you got the ugly dirt line. So basically, you plopped a green surface right down into heavy rough. And you didn't add any secondary uh, surfacing around the tee box. So you get that ugly line. So, and again, with your green on the left there, you have the, see ugly. all the dirt around there. So you're, you're putting green on heavy rough and then leaving it there. You need to add some, a I'm secondary. Using, is he using shapes or is he using splines? Probably splines. Then you need to spline some light rough around that green before you, otherwise you're going to keep getting that. And, it, and it's just really ugly. And as far as hitting it, your, your ball will get stuck in that, that little thing. All right, so, all right, so the uniformity of the heavy rough looks to be more consistent. So he's keeping that wide. Yep, that's you good. know. That's all good. right, yep. so that's good. You know, if you're gonna have it wide on a, one hole, have it wide on every yeah. hole, which yep. is fine. So he put it. So he put it in the settings to have a really wide secondary. Yep, and that's fine. And that's, yep. Some people don't have any, so right. If they want to make it really hard, so that's cool. Man, he says Bellamy's already done seven of your courses already. I'll have to Jeez. go check out his, his archive. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, he's slowing those noble greens down, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I play. Driver. They're not easy greens because I do them at 187. What, you? 187? No. Do you believe that? I never designed with 187s. You. Hey, Joshua. Okay. Now this screen's a little better. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no. I'm just reading. Uh, Joshua is S E P S D and S just trash, or try doing all courses in my area and all have E P S D. Okay. Terry Greason, what's up, Jack Wagon? Hey, Ch Terry, what's up, buddy? Check this out, Kent. I assume that's his bird emoji. Yes. What's up, buddy? Yeah, so, Joshua, what I can do, um, I'm not going to do it on this stream because we're doing some reviews, but um, I'll do a quick YouTube uh, for the EPSG. Did you see the EPSG video I did, the troubleshooting one? It shows you how to use it. Did you see that? Yeah. We're doing good, Terry. How are you, man? No, it's supposed to roll down. Double breaks. Yeah, I do like your I I do like your your contouring on your greens. They're challenging. They're not ridiculous. On whose? Th this guy's his green so far. I've I've liked I've liked them. Other than the side, yeah, no, he did a good job with the contouring. Yeah, his his greens are challenging and they make sense, and his pin placements are, are logical, except for the ones that we've. Yeah, that was there. right one block yeah. from the edge. Yeah, just but moved that pin seems, in. Yeah, he seems to have a pretty good grasp on on uh, on the greens. Yep. Oh, this is different. All right, so this is completely different. See how his retaining wall looks. Good looking beach, I might add. 
if I could make one suggestion, unless this was your intent, use the shorter sections of retaining wall because that has a really blocky, chunky look to it. And also, this green is like massive for um, <laughs> this is a really big green. Uh, and I'm looking, I'm zooming in on your retaining. You've there's gaps between them. Um, yeah, there's a couple gaps there where. You, yeah, you, retaining you're... walls are one of the toughest things to get they are, correct. They are. Um, there's a lot of really good tutorials out there. Mr. Grayson here, who's in this uh, stream, him and the whole uh, Dirty Ankle Mafia group, they're like the top-notch designers in this game. And you can find all sorts of stuff from uh, uh, Victor Lane Sports, who's Eric uh, Nesbitt, a uh, uh, Dirty Ankle Mafia guy, Terry's friend, and... and and Matt Fritch and a lot of guys have retaining wall tutorials out there on YouTube. If you look or on Twitch, um, that'll show you in more detail than we could possibly explain, um, how to get rid of those gaps. But my, my, my one takeaway is you're using really long sections of retaining wall here, and it just has a really uneven kind of a chunky look to it. If you want a nice, clean, smooth look to your retaining walls, use the shortest sections possible, especially on these big curves. All right. It takes a long time. And it's a pain in the ass, but the end result is that it's going to look a lot cleaner, a lot nicer. Um, anyway, so my advice is just check out some of those uh, retaining wall videos. Mm -hmm. Joshua, do me a favor and put a uh, put a post in the YouTube area somewhere, or one of them, uh, maybe in the troubleshooting video. Put the course name. Just give me the name and the address of the course. And it's very possible that there is no EPSG number for that area, in which case you're screwed, uh, unfortunately. Um, yeah, and I guess if I had to add anything else, this green is too big. I mean, I see what you're doing, but... You know, for this distance and for, for this particular layout, get a much smaller green. This is a football field. And uh, I don't know, put some, you know, roll up area or something. Not that you would need it, but you don't need this much green for this. Yeah. Stroke index of two. Narrow channel to uh, he's done that on several holes. It seems to be kind of his thing. He likes the narrow, yep. ooh, skinny landing area. Indeed. Very skinny. Kind of a cliche par four with a two. Oh, much too small of a much too small of a green. Again, I'm not gonna keep beating a dead horse. Right. Pretty much this just applies to all your greens. Make sure you add secondary um uh, surface to to your greens because you got that ugly dirt line around all of them. It looks like yeah, and uh, I really think this fairway needs to be wider. But that's just me. And also around your tee boxes, add your second, add your light rough. Now, I can see right now that, uh, I mean, I may have to call myself a liar, but um, I think that tree will be in my second shot. I was wondering, but I tried to keep right. Well, I'm um, going to hit center, and let's see okay. if that's, because yeah, that is, a tree shouldn't yeah, be. You're going to be right under that. You right. might have to punch it. Right, Thanks, that Rich, tree doesn't... shouldn't come into play. I mean, I see what he's trying to go for. He's going for this narrow. Channel. Now I'm okay on the right, but I also have the pro clubs. You're much up further than than I am to that. Yeah, I mean, it, it may be a long enough club that it it's going to go under the tree, but I'm going to play it like that tree isn't there. Right. And I think yeah, you I hit it. I did. I just, uh, yeah. Well, did I? Actually, I that tree is far enough that it's not well. Doesn't look like it's going to affect me. Okay. Again, I, I'd still, I mean, I see what he's trying to do. And, and that is a challenging, 
layout, but I guess I'd still believe in widening the fairway a little bit. Right. And as far as greens, a good rule of thumb for greens, and then you move it from there, is 30 by 30. 30 yards yeah. by 30 yards. Make it, and you can use the measuring <clears throat> tool and yeah. mark out 30 by 30. And if you're a little bigger, a little smaller, so be it. But at least... If you do that, you're going to stay consistent and keep it the green size at a tolerable, you know, a tolerable size. Now, right. this one's a, an eight iron, so you really don't need a huge green for it. Ooh, very, very fast. fast. Oh, you so, can his no, no. So there you go. So okay. it's. You know, just think of it as a 30 by 30 square and work with that. Not mm -hmm. saying that yep. it has to be a 30 by 30, but somewhere yeah. around there. General rule of thumb. Yeah. Right. So like that one out in the water, <sighs> you know, you could have done, did a measure and did like 40 by 40 and then had grass, a heavier rough around, you know, raise it up. So it, you know, it's not all green make it a little more difficult all right let's see 70. rich that's probably a good call i mean 30 you know i think it's probably a good call <clears throat> for fairway with although you know we're talking landing areas yeah i don't know i don't know that there's a a rule about it or a general rule of thumb but i don't like i think most people don't like really really skinny fairway just gotta at least give yourself enough room to in case there's high winds or, you know, left to right or right to left or. Yeah. There you go, Joshua. That's what I use. You see it? It's a steam controller. There Greg and I steam. both use them. Yeah, we love steam controller. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't help with your putting if you yeah. suck, but, you know, it's. <laughs> Yeah, look at you, even par. I'm three under, man. I know. I'm doing terrible. <laughs> I like his greed. And just a little aside for the designer. I mean, we're, we're not bashing your course. And if it comes across that way, then I apologize. Not my intention to bash your course at all. We're just trying to give you our observations, which are not written in stone. They're not, you know, it's just our opinions. Victory Lane um, Sports. Hold on, that rings a bell. I've never heard of him. I've never heard of him before. What's up, Eric? How you doing, buddy? How you doing, Eric? Eric Nesbitt from the Dirty Ankle Mafia. I was going to check out his bunker. One of the kings, funny. the kings of designing. <clears throat> yes, designer. If you're if when you watch this, because you said he's going to watch this later, Victory Lane Sports, the guy that you're seeing there in the chat when you replay this, he's one of the top designers in this game. I can't even. I have let's, no let's idea put how it this way. He's designed hundreds. It seems like he's got maybe what? How many you have Eric that HB is using as their default courses? Yes, right. You know, so that says something there. Yeah. Okay, now this bunker here, unlike so many of your other ones, really needs some some. Uh, yeah, that sculpting. Yeah, this is pretty much just flat. Right. In fact, I get a ninety-seven percent line. It's a. Uh, yeah, this is unlike the his other bunkers are. And then your fairway again. Uh, as we approach the green, it, it really, I think it needs a little more width. Just my opinion. I mean, I see what he's going for here. Yeah, this 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 bunker has no depth. Also, the transition of the light. Let's see if I can right hit my one iron out of a bunker. Let's see. Piece of cake. Yeah, so I done. shouldn't be able to do that. So, you know, anytime you can hit like a low rocketing shot out of a bunker like that, <clears throat> you want to have a, you know, you want to put a lip there to, because that's, it really didn't do anything. Um, you know, it's not a hazard, right? I could have been in the fairway, and I maybe lost 10 yards difference, maybe. 
Now your your green side bunkers on this one a lot better done than on the previous holes. I mean, the you still have that that dirt line because you didn't lay down any secondary surfacing around your bunker. But like I said, I'm not going to beat a dead horse. Right. We've already addressed that. But as far as the bunkers go, one they need a little depth, but they actually you've got them laid out next to the green perfectly. Um, and your it looks like you went with rough around sign instead of kind of half rough, half light rough. I think they look good and they work. Um, once you get that light rough, hey Bill, what's bunkers, up, man? It should be uh, they should look great. And the size of this bunker actually works, or excuse me, the size of this green is actually uh, about perfect. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, much better on the green bunkers here. Eric is designing. No way. Soccer. No, he says he's designing. By the way, Eric, I played your newest course that you published, and man, I love that. Great course. Look at this thing. The, the name escapes me, but I'm bad with names, but awesome course. Oh, I thought you were talking about my putt, how awesome it was. No, no, I'm not talking about your putt. Applebee's with the wife. Oh, oh. It, it did go in. <laughs> What a nice putt. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That was nice. I'm going to blow it. No, I went in two. All right. Holy God, I'm actually uh, not over par. There you go. Okay. Looks like you got some good sight lines here off the tee. And again, the tee dirt box around is the... your, yep, yep. your greens. Add some secondary surfacing there because that dirt line is really ugly. Uh, don't, my, my one criticism of this hole right off the bat, it's so cliche. You got your 485-yard par 4 narrow fairway to a green with your left and right mid fairway bunker. It almost looks... Right, mix it up a little bit. It it's like it's game. like playing the same holes over and over again, right? Yeah. So this is, this is just, you know, it's so boilerplate. Um, not that there's anything wrong with having the occasional boilerplate template, but I don't know. It's kind of boring. And, uh, the whole thing with the, I don't know. To me, I, I never liked like the fair, you know, see how the bunkers are in the light rough and the heavy rough pretty much in the fairway, but you know, I like to keep the bunkers outside that you have a really wide uh, light rough there, but I like to keep, keep it over in the heavy rough, you know, yeah, keep the bunkers uh, yeah. out of, out of the light rough area. It just looks yeah. much yeah, better. Right. Yeah. Some, several of his, his fairway bunkers tend to just infringe into the fairway. Right. Which can be done if it's done right, but, the, the 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 surfacing around it just looks really rough, and yeah, figs and pigs. By the way, great name. Um, I was actually going to come to that when we got closer to the. Yeah. Now this, um, same deal with the waypoint, right? It gave me a two wood, so you just need to go mm -hmm. in and change your waypoint that's out here somewhere, mm -hmm. yep. and and move it up so yep. it's like two hundred and eighty something yards. And that way you're guaranteed that people aren't going to get bogus clubs. Yeah. Yeah. Too bad. Not that you always have to hand driver to the golfer. Right. Right. I, but, I mean, but in this case, obviously, I mean, driver's the club and, and he didn't get it. And if he's not paying attention, he's going to, why the hell was my, my tee shot so short? Oh, right. Right. Especially on a hole like this. It, you know, if it's like a dog leg left and it's difficult to get to the 280, 290 area and you give them a three iron and say, yeah, be safe, play here. That's different than a straightaway driver that you know you're going to hit driver. Just move that yeah. waypoint out to 285 yards and <coughs> you won't run into that problem. As uh, Figs and Pigs pointed out, yeah, this, this green is also too small. And like he says, proportionally for the, the distance of this approach shot. 
So I'm using a four iron to get there. And yet, I hey, Adam, what's very, up, buddy? Hey, Adam. Very little room, especially with this pin position. Um, need to make your, your green bigger. And uh, once again, the, the yeah, there's the dirt around green. there. Just yep, put a yep, secondary. Yep surface yep. around the green so you don't end up with all this dirt around here yep. or so I, i'd expand the size of this green i mean i don't think there's anything wrong with your bunker placements um i actually like that especially the front bunker there but give give the golfer a chance and especially if you had a really strong following wind this would be a bitch so yep yeah just remember the 30 by 30 rule just yeah, yeah. just as a as a template not that you're going to have a square green uh, that's fitting perfectly 30 right. by 30, but, you know, just try to keep it around that air, around that size. I don't know if it was Terry, Eric, somebody told me about that. Uh, maybe Matt Fritch said, you know, just base it 30, 30. <laughs> that's okay, Bill. Plug away, man. Verde Creek Golf Club. All right. Newly published. Plug away, plug away. That's what she said. Oh, go in the hole. Nah. Here, let me show you how it's done. Well, we're playing nine holes of three courses. That's I don't right. know what Greg's schedule is like, but, you know, we can do the same with yours or try it or whatever. But let's play a couple more of this one. You want? Okay. I just want to see the contrast in the back to the front. Just out of curiosity. All right. Let's play a couple more. I got all night, dude. So, you know. This is a this is a really good first course, and it's got yep. it's got a lot of um, potential. It just has some you know a few things that need to be ironed out. Indeed. And again, and I hate to keep harping on this, but try to try to get away from the typical. <laughs> it's just, it's one of my pet peeves when I see a a left and right bunker midway on the fairway, in the in the landing area. It, it's so cliche. And I and I realize and, and you don't need to know any more than that by just going into the auto gen. It always puts a left and right, right. bunker on the So if, the if you there. didn't auto gen this course and then work from the auto gen, it looks auto gened on yep. certain spots, right? Yeah. Like the water, just, the gr the the fairway coming bumping up against the water. That's a known auto gen problem. And Every single auto gen course that you do does that. It it does that. It also puts the bunkers out in the fairway. So I don't know if these are auto gen. And this sight line right here could really use some help. So like yeah, that big that, that yeah, big area big right in front of the T box, drop that down about forty feet. And then you would be able to see the fairway, right? Yeah, general rule of thumb on sight lines is just, and I'm sure you probably know what true sim is. The true sim tour, you know, pretend that you don't have your scout cam, and and you're on the tee and you can't see anything but what you can see, and just think of it in those terms, and that should help your sight lines. Just thinking along, you know, from that perspective, because if this was on true sim, all these blind tee shots, you're kind of penalizing. Yeah, the Joshua. Crap out of the I'm golfers. sorry, Joshua. Yeah. Maybe tomorrow morning. I don't know where you're. Where are you located? No, oh, nice oh, shot. Thank you. Thank you. Now we went from a really tiny green to this huge football field of a green. Right. So again, thirty by thirty. Think of it, and use that measuring tool and just do a thirty by thirty and say, all right, it needs to be approximately that size. And Things work and with pigs, that. Yeah, I, I think I think that's the theme here. And I'm not criticizing that. I mean, if that's what he's going for, okay. Um, it doesn't appeal to me because I'm not a big fan of tournament objects, especially on every tee box. But if that's what he's going for, I'm not going to criticize. It's an aesthetic thing. And aesthetics are completely subjective. So, Oh, what a putt. I'll take that. Nicely done, man. That was sweet. Now, if this was 180... That would be a yellow slope. What's SoCal, Joshua? Is that? Oh, Southern Cal. Okay, okay. 
you gotta you have to excuse the uh, northeastern here i don't know the to speak out there all right so you're southern california all right Uh oh why are we locked up i'm getting a little blinky thing i'm good uh come on there we go you have lost your connect from the main menu what the fuck an, un- an unknown network error has occurred error code hbne3101 <laughs> oh, what God. the fuck is that and get this it's a golf club error message not a not a steam interesting I've never seen that. Before. All right, so I guess we're playing ten holes on this one. I'll get out of it. Apparently so. Yeah. So, um, that's Ooh. the feedback for that course, which was Palm Beach GC Beta. All right, so you know he had he had uh, asked that people critique it. I told him we have a show. We would critique it, and there we go. So the next guy, um. And again, these are guys over in Reddit that, you know, I think they know about um, TGC Tours. You know, I mentioned it over there. But um, let's see. Got to find out what's going on with Greg. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, so it's not my internet. It was like a, I don't know. I can't say it's a Steam thing either. It's very odd. Come back in. All right. That was really weird. Says Greg Fordyce is playing, which he's not. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, I love Steam. Have I ever told you that? Yeah, love I love it. it. Now it's not showing you there. All right, so there we go. Okay, are you in? No, I'm rebooting Steam. Okay. Well, I'm trying to. Hmm. What's the best forum for TGC? TGCtours.proboards.com. There's so many great designer threads on there. You'll spend all day. There's the URL. Uh, Just go there. I mean, it's a kick-ass forum. You have thousands of people over there. Um, you know, definitely. Yeah, there's a whole section on designing over there. There's tutorials. There's tons of stuff. And it's a great place to expose your course to uh, other players to try it out and give you feedback as well. Yeah, like Eric yeah. said, um, you know, I forget who told me. I think it was Matt Fritch because I said, when he critiqued that one fantasy course I did, Eric, yeah, there was uh, there were some issues with some of the greens being too big, and I said, "Well, as a as a rule of thumb, what what size?" And he's like, "30 by 30 is a good roundabout figure." What do you use, Eric? Do you use like a an average? I mean, obviously the greens are going to vary, but all right, 60 by 25. And again, oh. it depends with the hole. Right. It depends on the hole. But if you're hitting a three wood into a green, you know, you can't have it 10 yards deep. You know, that type of thing. So are you in now or no? I'm getting back in. And it says Steam needs to update. Well, okay. It can fucking wait. It can wait. Well, I'm probably going to have to exit out of Steam because never. Does it freaking work um, with you coming in and it actually shows it? Really? Let me see if I can see you. Manage party. Yeah. Okay. So you use yep. uh, 30 by 30 as an average, right? All right, cool. Do you see me? Huh? What? I see you. I see you. When I go to manage party, I can see you online. Do you see me online? No. Oh, oh holy crazy. shit. It does show it. Okay. Ah, all right. Send invite. Yeah. Nor- well, you remember. I would have to exit out of Steam and go yep. back in to get you. So There's now the maybe invite. they fixed that. That would be nice. All right. I got your invite. Okay. So Sweet. Kent, tell me, what is the second course we were playing? This all right. So we've got three of them. This one is, again, an, I think a newer designer. 
and he wanted to critique. Um, one guy played it I saw over there, and he's like, well, you know, I gave it four stars, maybe three and a half. And that's pretty much all he said, you know. So uh, um, Great critique. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there was – well, okay. One thing he did mention and was – and I'll be curious to see about it. He said, I didn't really like the trees in the middle of the fairway. So if that's like a normal thing for him – you know, we'll have to take a look. Okay, Eric. Okay, thanks for stopping by, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for stopping. Yeah, Eric, that's one of the dudes that you probably played his courses and didn't realize it because if you played the, whatever you call it, the PGA mode in TGC when you first got uh, it. Hey, Eric, real quick. <clears throat> Which courses of yours are in HP's uh, HB's list of courses they're the ones they stole from you i mean <laughs> that they use or actual... they use which ones yeah. are they i think you told me a while back but well there's a few aren't there yeah at least two or three or four or five i don't know how yeah if you play like the pga mode offline they call it playing eric's courses devon Corey country okay club, and the club at ravenswood. ravenswood all right See, each one of those has like millions of plays, literally, or right. hundreds of thousands of plays. Well, basically, like all your courses can. All if right. you have like four or five hundred thousand plays on your courses, yeah, on each one. Right, right. Yeah, minus four hundred and forty-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Let me find this course name. This course name is called Rolling Rock, like the beer. Oh, that's the nasty stuff, too. Rolling oh. Rock GC. Yeah, that's like Pabst. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no here it is. Best. All right, so medium slow. And let me just make sure all, yeah, everything's default, so we'll play their conditions. All right, and I can't believe I just did that, but that's okay today. Create match. All right, All right one T and one pin. All right. Okay. So we're going to be playing the red one. What's the name of the course? It's Rolling Rock GC. Oh, you're talking to Eric. Hallstatt. That's the club. That's his course I just played. That's a kick-ass golf. I thoroughly enjoyed my round. Have you played that yet, Kent? No, I have not. Hallstatt? Yeah, nice course. Although that kind of goes without saying. But. Yeah, I would say so. And you get a trash can and you get a trash, <laughs> you can. Get a trash can. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I was saying wider fairways. This one's got a lot. Well, no it's definitely wider. Rough. Yeah, we go right from. So we go to from rough. we go from a three yard, <laughs> four yard rough to uh, no rough. Yeah. Okay, so here we go with the. You know, what looks to be autogen fairways, the bunkers. All right. Mm -hmm. I don't see any dirt here, so that's good. He's got the secondary going on. All right. Interesting. So, but again, I mean, just placing these fairways are so wide. But he does have the... Uh, is this his first course, did you say? Or yeah, pretty much not? his first course, yep. Okay. So these, right. both of these guys, this these are their uh, first courses. Okay, well. And they were all excited that we were going to put this on the show. and. Um, Just right off the bat, you know, flat, flatten your tee boxes. This mm -hmm. is a roly-poly tee box. Not that, it, not that it matters because I'm on a tee, but still. Right, I mean, the, tea, the tees themselves, they're even. So that's good. So yeah. he did take the time to flatten that. <laughs> yep. 
And you then know? I'm looking at the landing area and contour in there is kind of wicked. Yeah. At least for the pro clubs, because it's going to roll right. Well, actually, no, I hit fast. So <laughs> never mind. I'm not going to even hit the landing. I mean, some, some uh, smoothing on, as far as contouring goes could be. Right. I mean, like this, the lighter rough, see how it's not uniform? So it's like really wide where Greg is now, but you look down further and it's only like two yards wide. You want to try to keep that. That's, I, oh, shit. I forget what causes that. Um, I go through this every time. <laughs> I know I missed the goddamn fairway. It's like a mile wide. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! All right, so planting. There's the uh, dirt. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's from not so, putting a secondary surface. Yeah. That on seems the to fairway. be a common mistake on on beginner designers. Right. Uh, we've all done it. I think everybody's done it at some point. Yep. And, yeah, you know, exactly. It's a it's a good. The whole layout is good. I, I just think some of the it just needs a little bit of polishing. I'm right. not a big fan, by the way, of those bull rushes at the end of the fairway. I, that's just a personal thing. So when you get into the aesthetics of of planting and that kind of thing, you know, you're talking about aesthetics. It's all subjective. What looks good to one person might look like shit to somebody else. So take my opinions with a grain of salt. Okay. So. This green's a fail, at least the pin, okay? And let me show you why. So if you look here, we got a really steep slope in the front. Then as we go up, it's severely down. So you never want to put a pin on a bowl, on an inverted oh, bowl. I hate those. I hate those. Because you, you, you just, you fight up it back and, down, and forth. Up and down, up right. And down, up. Now, <laughs> you know, it's frustrating. So you want to have an area where the pin is. You want it a little bit flat. It doesn't have to be flat, flat. But you don't want it so you go up the hill and then instantly off the green, which is yeah. that's what this is going to do. Um, yeah, and there's nothing wrong with a false front, but this is like, like you said, it's an inverted bowl. That's, yeah, that's just not a, it's just not a realistic or fair um Right, oh, very fast. Uh, yeah, you're off the, the ground. Entirely. Yep, no clue what the hell I just did, but that's all right. And I... your your bunkers need a little bit of uh, opening as well. They're they're a little on the flat side. Oh boy, look at this lie. Oh my god. Ouch. I don't think I'm gonna get there. Oh. Yeah. See. This this bunker needs a little bit of depth to it, so you want to use your soft fuzzy brush, and you want to, or, or the next to, to the soft fuzzy brush, and you want to look at a few tutorials on bunker sculpting. Yep. Make those really pop. Oh lordy, look at this! Fifty-eight feet. So here's a perfect example. Oh, so he's got 118 go. foot. Oh my god! Did you see the speed on these? No. What is it? 118. <laughs> And look, all right, so this is perfect example of what I was just talking about. Oh, These are 118 speed. Now, normally on this show, we play 187. If we played 187 on this, forget it. You would, so you would yeah, have so, so much. This would be so illegal. Okay. Yeah, if you sped this up, those slight, the slight movement we're seeing would, would probably be yellow and red, but I gotta say, I find it challenging. I'll say that I, I don't play 118s hardly. This is uh, like speaking Greek for me. This is going to be challenging. I didn't realize they were this slow. However, at this speed, um, I'm not seeing any yellow or reds. Well, I hope not. <laughs> not at 118. <laughs> nope. So, point being, when you design a course, I think a now, 187s are extreme. I like 187s. I, I always did build courses with 187s. All right. When you design, oh, when you design a course, do something like 170s when you design it to make sure there's no illegal 
pins with the red or the yellow near the pin. Then, if you want to go down to 118s, by all means do it. All right, but that way you're assured that, you know, it's going to be legal if somebody decides to speed up the greens. And yeah, because it just, you're, it opens it up to more to more players. Right. I mean, if you always if you have to lock them in at one eighteen, and then everything out faster than that's going to be red or yellow. One eighteen versus one eighty seven. Which one excluded. would you rather have, Adam? <laughs> um, so right here, I don't like this. I don't like the rock blocking my view. I want to see the hole. So that's okay to like use that. rocks. I don't like the yellow planting there. Yeah. Let's, Move that rock out of the way so you can see the hole, okay? And this whole big sandy area, uh, I don't know. I mean, I see what he's doing there. It's, a, it's an interesting concept. Right. Um, it's different. I guess if it had some sculpting done to it, it would look better. Uh, but just being flat, expansive sand like that. Right, a waste it, area it type much. thing. Yeah, it doesn't do much for me. But the rock has to go. So you would want to move that rock to the left so you can still see it, but not block the hole. Yeah, or sink it down to the ground a little bit or something. Ooh, I almost yep. got a hole in one. At this speed, I do like your, your green sculpting. At this speed, I think it works. Right. Now, if we would, I mean, if you see this video, and I'll, I'll post it in Reddit so they know it, but if he posts, the sand. I want him to put, bump up his course, play it, and play it at like 160 something, and see how difficult the greens are. Yeah, a good concept on this hole. Um, interesting. How do you get on that green? Uh, okay, so right, so right here, the the way that the the surfacing falls off in the steep edge into the water, it has a real autogen look to it. Uh, the the way the surfaces, the textures, just kind of, they look like somebody poured, and it just kind of ran down the sides. I've never liked that look. It, it's got a very autogen look to it. Yep. It just doesn't look very natural. No. So you want to use your, what you want to do on your edges like that, where it goes down the water, um, your your softer brushes. And, and again, there's a million tutorials out there. Eric Nesbitt's got a million of them. <clears throat> Crazy Canuck, Andre is another one. On contouring, and especially along uh, water, to make those, those, uh, those edges look a lot more natural and, and, uh, less severe like this one does yeah i'm not gonna i'm not gonna beat a dead horse with that but uh, right i mean 90 percent of newbie designers it's all about contouring yeah and that's you know? a hard thing to master it's tough it is, it is. and, and but, practice makes perfect on but that. you also you know you need to learn page four top left fuzzy brush Soft fuzzy. Yeah. that's it and learn to love that brush because you're going to need it, you're gonna use whether it's around greens, it's in your yeah. bunkers, around the fairways, these tee boxes, everywhere. Uh, you know, it's just. <clears throat> yep. And, and another thing you can do is just to study a lot of the other courses designed by, you know, more advanced designers, like we've already mentioned. Just when you're playing it, don't play the course. Use your camera and just zoom around and and. And look at what they do along the water's edge. Look at their contouring. Look at their sculpting. Look at their greens. Look at how they, at the at the sight lines off your tee box. Look at the surfacing and the and the transitions. That's probably the best thing you can do. And and then try to emulate that in your own course. And it's like and this if you don't hole. know how, then then this check this out some course tutorial. this hole needs help. So that whole oh, area yeah. in the front needs to be sunk down maybe thirty feet, forty feet. All right, so you can see your green, your bunkers, all right, because it just makes the course look so much better. Because yeah. you're, you're putting all that work into the greens and the bunkers around the greens, 
you want to be able to see it. Now, from where I'm at, I can see them. Where Greg was at, he couldn't. Yeah, and also from a pro club standpoint, the approach on this really could use a run-up area instead of that strip of rough, which was pointed out um, by figs and pigs. I mean, I mean, for masters, no, he could probably hit it, but I could use a run-up area on that. So I would suggest, you know, thinking about it in terms of pro clubs on your pro shot like that. Uh, get rid of the heavy rough and maybe put fairway there. Because now you like I, his socks, Bill. You don't like the shorts. <laughs> he just <laughs> bought you, those Bill. socks. Fifty? What were they? Fifty bucks? Five hundred bucks. Five hundred bucks for those socks. <laughs> <laughs> and you wonder why like, he's broke. <laughs> I have to win like ten PGA tournaments to afford my socks. Oh. Yeah, I can putt one eighteens. 118, 187. What's the difference? I don't know how hard to hit it at 118. Oh, I knew oh, Eric I would like the it. pink, the hot pink <laughs> shorts, baby. <laughs> right on, Eric. You can never go wrong with hot pink. That's classy. You have to be a real man to wear it. Damn straight. You know, in real life. Mm. All right. I'm not, so. I'm not a fan of the planting and. No. It's probably going to uh, blind the shot, or is it? Oh, and then, and again, ooh, don't. Okay, so so, right off the bat, you want to lower the uh, that huge hill there in front of the fairway. I've got no sight line. Mm -hmm. um, that tree in the middle of the fairway, uh, not a fan of it. You got a couple little tumors out there in the fairway. It looks like you attempted to contour it. By basically just putting a, a rather hard brush out there and then just pulling up and then pulling up and then pulling up. It looks unnatural. So I would suggest, again, soft fuzzy. And, you know, think about your contouring in terms of natural looking instead of that, that artificial look. Otherwise, the, the fairway is basically perfectly flat. And ditto the bunker on the left. There's no depth to it. So you'll again thinking thinking of contouring in terms of natural instead of artificial. Um, boy, this is going to be hard to hit. That tree is. Uh, I mean, I see what he's trying to do here. Uh, I don't like it. I think you should lose the tree or, or make it smaller or something. And also, it's growing right up out of the fairway. There, there's nothing around it. Right. That's just, that's not natural. There should be a little rough or something around that tree, but and again, I'm not trying to be overly critical. I'm just if I come across that way, I apologize. Oh, you drifted into the Well, bunker. I'm hitting fucking fast every time. It's just pathetic. All right. Again, there's some there's some really great contouring videos out there by Andre and uh, Matt Fritch and Eric and, and more people than I can mention and I'm telling you, just watching a few of those videos will change how you design. Because contouring really is about 50%, if not more, of the design process. And if I can hit a one iron out of the bunker, which I can. Did you make it? Yeah, you made it. Ooh, you left the in-game party. I did? Yeah. Well, it says you did, but I still see you in my party. Man, Steam is really acting up tonight, isn't it? Are you yep. showing you're still in? Yeah, I'm still here. Huh? You still see okay. me? Yeah. All right. I'm going to ignore that message from Steam. I think you're... I think you're I, did have a, I did have something pop up. Okay. Just for well, a second. Just a little... Oh, nope. Now it says you're gone. Son of a bitch. I'm in it. Steam is uh, pissing me off. Well, damn it. What did we make it through? Four holes almost? Yep. So it happened to me the last time, and now it's happening to you this time. Yeah, what? Let's That's see. what she said. <laughs> <T -W -S> -S. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're You're... Green side bunkers, I like the positions, but again, they need a little bit of sculpting, add a little depth to them. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to exit. Yeah. I wish we could. I wish we could start on a particular hole. We can't. I know.
All right, exiting. That's that's a bummer. Well, we can start on the back nine. Yep. I should probably exit because when you come back in, you can never see me. So I'll Correct. Exit the game well, it's in. just the opposite, actually. Hold oh, on. Is it? Let's oh, see. okay. I got it backwards. Let's see. Hold on. All right. No problem. Uh, Greg is playing. Actually, I just exited. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going back in. All right. I'm going back in. Going in for the kill. Pissy Doctor has started to round on Scarlet in Germany. Pissy Doctor. Let's do Griffin. You know, this is an excellent time for me to take a piss. All right. You have a good day. Told him to just put the pickle jar next to his desk, but he won't listen to me. Yeah, I'm starting to wonder. I started a stream thing with Steam. So somehow it's supposed to be recording this stream in Steam. I don't know how it works. I set it up, and I'm wondering if that is what is causing this problem. So I don't know how it would show up in Steam. All right. I sent you an invite. I don't know if it was just a bogus connection. Oh, I got it. I really should just get a big old pickle jar and keep it under my... That's what I just said to them. Oh, oh. Excellent. I said I'd keep telling them to put the pickle jar next to your <laughs> seat so you don't have to get up. But Exactly. All right. Rolling Rock. Back nine. Round length, back nine. Man, rolling we'll, rock beer. Remember that shit? Yeah, it was nasty. Oh, man. That is some piss. Sorry if I've offended any rolling rock fans. Now, you know what? You know what I'm going to do? Create? What? Course conditions. No. We're going to change the course conditions. Okay. Just to showing what I'm talking about here. Um, private course conditions, and we'll say. Green. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna speed them up. Yep. You? So I'm gonna I'm okay. only gonna put them on fast. I won't put them on 187s. Well, I'm getting a little circle. I I lost my connection. What the hell's going on? Anybody else having Steam issues tonight, or is it just me and Ken? This well, is weird. You know what I was telling them is I was telling them that remember I said I set up that steam thing oh yeah the I'm wondering steam. if that's effing it up the stream thing right because mm. I got a thing saying oh you're streaming anybody can watch it huh so I'm know. wondering if that is the problem in which case kill it here's what I'm gonna do guys I am going to have to end the stream and then I'm going to start it again, but I'm not going to do this YouTube thing. Eric um, says that him and already dog YouTube. Problem. So. Yeah, let's see. Let me find this thing. Steam sucks. It does. It does. All oh, right. it's up. It's updating my Steam. Again? No, I, I exited out because it's a connection. Now I'm trying to go back in, but it says it's updating it. Maybe that'll help my connection stability. Okay. Oh yeah, third party authentication. All that. shit. Don't you love it when this happens midstream? Always. All right, guys. I'm gonna end the stream. I'm gonna get rid of this um, streaming thing for Steam, and we're gonna reconnect. So give me about three minutes. All right. 